Hello and welcome. We're glad you decided to join us today by downloading and listening to this week's featured message. We pray that you allow God to use this week's message to teach and inspire you while you listen. Say that, please. Three angels' messages. And for those of us who have been associated with the Seventh day Adventist Church, we see in those three angels and their words instruction for the latter day. A call to arms for God's people to a special kind of faithfulness at a time when the antagonism between heaven and earth intensifies. And we are seeing evidence of that intensification in all that occurs in our world today. There is a battle between good and evil and if you have not noticed it, it's going on on your street. There's been a lot of talk in these last few days about Wall Street and Main Street. Well, this battle I'm talking about is on every street. A battle between good and evil The three angels' messages can be summed up in three phrases. Number one, the first angel basically says that we're about to restore God to his rightful place. It's a call to worship, to fear, and to glorify God. The God who made heaven and earth. It's, it's a call that says God has been placed here, but God needs to be resurrected back here in our minds. The eternal one. The second angel announces a call to the end of Babylon or confusion, spiritual confusion. The second angel declares there's some mixed up heads even in the church. And confusion has possessed too many minds in the church. And so the second angel says that confusion must end. And then the third angel <clears throat> pronounces judgment on those who place Satan's teachings above God's teachings. Now, these three messages come in the context of the book of Revelation. And in Revelation, we have learned the following. God is able to keep his church, sustain it. Second, knowing our task, Satan works judiciously to keep us from it. And third, the book of Revelation is about putting God in his rightful place. Now, I keep coming back to that because a lot of us haven't gotten it yet. A lot of us really think that we love the Lord. But proof of love for the Lord is that your whole life has become reprioritized with His priorities. In other words, you have come, listen to me, you have come to the point where what God wants for you is exactly what you want for you. Most of us are not there yet. We're still pushing in God's lap some things he has no mind of ever supplying. I'm going to say some tough things, things now. Some of us who want to get married never will. Will you trust God for that? Some of you who want a degree will never have it. Some of you who want money will never get it. Now, I accept the fact you're not saying amen, because you hadn't thought about that. <laughs> what I'm saying...
saying to you, without apology, is that as we move out of this year to the next, it's time for everybody to drop anything that God isn't supplying and enjoy what He is. That's what it means to put God back in His rightful place. In these first three sermons from the three angels, we've, we, we've learned that the, that, the, that the mission of the church remains the same in spite of all these historical events. The, the, the young black man who's now going to be the president of the United States, we've learned that, that God has not changed his agenda for the church because of that. We, we've also learned that as that fine young black president-to-be gathers his group together to help him in what he's going to do, that God has also supplied his church with information and prophecies that we might do the work that we are supposed to do. And then in the second sermon, we, we looked at those words, fear God, give glory to God, the hour of his judgment has come, worship him. And, and we pointed out that the angel seems to be saying the same thing over and over again. Fear God, give glory to God, worship God. It's, and, 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 and the reason he is is because... The angel hungers for you to do what I've just talked about. Put God in His rightful place. Stop arguing with God. You pray a prayer. He doesn't answer it. Move on to the next thing. He just answered it. All right now. Come on, preacher. He's not going to do it. At least not now. Move to the next thing. Rise up from your knees thankful that your knees still work. That while you were praying, your ears didn't stop up and your eyes didn't go blind. Are you listening to me? It's time to walk in a, in a glorified fashion before God. Understanding, understanding that the great supplier always knows what to supply and when to supply it and how to supply it. He makes no mistakes whatsoever. You're in an accident, you lose your hand. He already said it's better to go to heaven one-handed. Yeah. And then in the third sermon that we preached already, we found that this judgment spoken of by the first angel will involve God searching and saving for eternity those who've made God the prime mover in their life. See, the simple proof that God is the prime mover in your life is that you trust and obey. And then in our third sermon, where I want to go today, the first angel ends his words by saying, And worship him that made heaven and earth, the sea and the fountains of waters. Now we're going to study. And once again we pointed out that those words are found in Exodus 20.11. Where? Where, church? Where the Bible says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. And I said that I believe that inherent in the three angels' messages and inherent in the first angel's message is the restoration of the Sabbath truth. In one of her books, the old lady Ellen White wrote, The Appeal to Worship God. I'm sorry, take that back. The Bible commentary adds, the Bible commentary adds, the appeal to worship God as Creator has become especially timely in these years following the initial preaching of the first angel's message because of the rapid spread of the theory of evolution. Furthermore, the commentary continues on verse 7, furthermore, the call to worship the God of heaven as creator of all things implies that do he be given to the sign of God's creative works, the Sabbath of the Lord. And I keep asking myself, Sonia, why, why is this Sabbath thing? What, what's, what's this Sabbath thing? Well, we're going to get there. Uh, we demonstrated that when the second angel denounces Babylon and, and, and this represents confusion, uh, and then we studied the attitudes that prompted the ancient people to build the Tower of Babel. Remember that? 
and saw that the root of their problem was unwillingness to take God at His word. God said, no more flood. They built a tower to escape the flood that He said wasn't coming. See, think of the towers you build to escape stuff that God has said not going to happen. Think of the energies we waste in life preparing for what God is not providing. I say again without apology, and I don't want you to feel bad because we all do it, but when you think about it, we spend, Eric, most of our life acquiring stuff that's going to be burned up. And every now and then I have to come back and just say that so that you, you, you keep your focus. Nice jacket, my brother. He's going to burn it up. <laughs> and, 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 and some of you have taken this attitude. I mean, you drive very nice cars, very sharp cars. I guess you said, let's give him something to really burn up. <laughs> I got no problem with that as long as you understand that these are, listen, these are things from which we must be detached before they're burned up. One of the confusions, Kathy Vess, that hangs out there is that many sincere Christians do not understand the requirement or meaning of the Sabbath truth as recorded in Exodus 28-11. We're going to come to that. And then this third angel pronounces destruction. This is directly related to the judgment pronounced by the first angel. The destruction is upon a particular group. Here are the words of the third angel. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. In summary, the final judgment of God centers around an attitude toward God. That attitude manifests itself in, the, in, 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 in true worship. Worship, listen, the three angels' messages come down to this. Worship the beast and his image, or worship the creator of heaven and earth. Salvation is going to boil down to worship. See, your priorities that you set, the music that you listen to, the movies that you watch, the clothes that you wear, are all expressions of your worship of God. Did you know that? See, the whole great controversy, Sister Samson, the whole great controversy started with the devil challenging God's place, refusing to worship him. And so when he came down to Adam and Eve, he brought them almost immediately to a posture of not respecting and adoring God. So much so that a five-minute, ten-minute span after sin, they're hiding from God, the same God who when He came down every evening, they rushed to worship. Now they hide from that worship. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. <laughs> now, next sentence. Tracy Herman Stein, when you sin, you do not worship. Worship is more than coming here on Sabbath morning and sitting in this church and listening to a sermon. Worship is a way of life. Amen. Worship is an attitude that says God is all in all. And, and so when I'm driving my car, I can worship. Amen. When I'm in the kitchen, I can worship. Come on, somebody. An act of sin is an act of blasphemy against God. Let's show the entire fourth commandment on the screen. Read, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do what? Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that's within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and held it. Now, let's look more closely at the contrast set up in Revelation 14. For when the, when the three angels' messages end, they end in these words. Go to verse 12, Revelation 14, 12. You see it? Read, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Now, listen, listen. The commandments have in them the commandment for true worship. Why does not the text then separate out the fourth commandment in contrast to the mark? See, you either have the mark or you have the worship. Either you worship the image or you worship the Creator. Are you with me so far? And the contrast keeps coming up in those in, the, in, in that three angels' messages. Uh, you, you're either worship, worshiping the God that made heaven and earth, or you worship the beast and his image, or a substitute for the real thing. Why does not the text then separate out the fourth commandment in contrast to the mark? Because the Sabbath and the true keeping of it is more than a day. Here are they that worship the image. Here are they that keep the commandments. The mark is more than a day. And the Sabbath is more than a day. And you'll see before this sermon is over, you can't keep the Sabbath and break another commandment. Because the Sabbath is an attitude, mm-hmm. not a day. Amen. Come on now. Are you with me? Even if you aren't, try. <laughs> the mark that's described in the three angels' messages mm-hmm. is described, Smith, as being placed on the forehead, mm-hmm. the mind of man the decision-making entity for right and wrong. Now notice how this phrase, mark of the beast, emerges in Revelation over and over again. Go to Revelation 13. That's where it shows up the first time. It's talking about these powers that come together against God's people, makes it rough for them to buy and sell, down in verse 14. And then verse 16, read, and he causeth all, I need everybody reading, 13, 16, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation 14, 9, go there, read, and the third angel followed, can't wait on you, 14, 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand. Now I want you to just keep getting the contrast. See, worship the beast in his image, or worship the Lord who made heaven and earth. Worship the beast in his image, or worship the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, Look at Revelation 14, 11. Read, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast in his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Notice that. Revelation 15, 2. Ready? And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass, mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his what? Image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, and the harps of God. Whatever this mark is, it doesn't get you to the sea of glass. 
Whatever this attitude is against God, it doesn't get you to the... You, you have to get a victory over that. Now, the fact, listen to me, Sanford. The fact that the Bible talks about you getting a victory over that, it's got to be more than a day. Anybody can put down a day. The mark embraces an attitude of defiance against God. See, the day, the other day, the day in contrast to God's day, is, is more than just a day. It's a statement that I can rearrange what God says. And there are people, calm down, there are people, <laughs> there are people who worship on the seventh day, but they have an attitude of defiance against God. Yes, yes. So worshiping on that day is not going to save them. Yes. And you've got to get that today. Come on, preacher. That's got to be clear to you today. Yes. Yes, you can't give God 24 hours and, and, and think you're going to heaven. For the way you handle the 24 is an expression how you've handled the rest of the 100, 168 that are left. Come on now. And the reason why sometimes, Derek, so little worship takes place on Sabbath is because the folk coming to church on Sabbath are bringing an attitude of defiance against God, which they expressed on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then they think they're going to put on religious clothes on one day? And by God? No way! No way. No way, Jose. Did you think that one? 16.2 has the same idea. 19.20 the same idea. 24. Once this mark and image thing come up, Cheryl, they run for the rest of the Bible. It's like we're divided in this earth between those who really worship God and those who worship other things. The mark on the forehead. The mark is a sign of how a person thinks about God. Now, if the devil and Satan is doing something, Brother Jones, to the head. And you do know that every day the devil's trying to climb in your head. How many of you have felt his visits? Don't be holy. Get your hand up high. Does he make stops? Come on, somebody. I said, did he drop in this week? Now, if, Palmer, the devil is smart enough to know where the seat is, if the devil, Dent, is after your head, why would not God have as much wisdom? Revelation 7, 1 through 3. I can't wait on you. It's in the same book, by the way. And after these things, I saw four angels. Help me, help me. Standing on the four corners of the earth. I love this drama stuff in, in Revelation. Holding the four winds of the earth. Isn't that something? And the wind, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, or on any tree. That's heavy stuff. Come on. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Uh, look at that, Smith. It's, it, it's, now, it's now really dramatic. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, verse 3, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of God. Where? Where? Same spot, Smitty, the devil's after. God says, if you let me in first, I'll meet him at the door. Hallelujah! Now I'm enjoying my own sermon. I don't care what you're doing. I'm enjoying this here. Because I've been trying to figure out how am I going to stand, Clement, in the last day. The devil messing with my mind and messing with my thoughts and messing with my priorities. God says, just move over. Let me inside. But when I place my seal, Deborah Sanford, he's saying, 
You got to change. It's, it's evidenced by a change of attitude toward me. I'm going to say it again, folks. Worship is more than a day. It's more than a day. Now, this power that does this sealing, we know from Revelation that this power that does this marking, this power that does this marking, we know from studying Revelation 13, 2, Revelation 12, 9, Revelation 13, 11, and 12, it's the devil, the devil working. You see, Levison, when you go to work on Monday morning, now, you all do know that the devil never sleeps. And you see, Vanessa, this thing disturbs me because I need rest. I can't stay up all the time worrying about the devil. I need sleep, y'all. Come on, I need sleep. So who's going to look out for me while I'm sleeping? Huh? And, 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 and so the Bible's saying, don't you worry. There's somebody else who's, 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 who's working on your behalf. Sealing. Sealing. Daniel 6, 8 says that the signing of a document by an ancient king was an act of sealing with a signet ring, mm -hmm. which the king wore and carefully guarded. The seal had three characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, put that up on the screen if you can find it. The ruler's name, what does it have? Mm -hmm. They don't have it on the screen, so you have to talk back to me. The ruler's name. Uh, no, 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 no. The ruler's name. And then the ruler's position. You got the wrong thing up there. That's why they're reading the wrong thing. Ruler's position, title, and the extent of his dominion or jurisdiction. Extent of his dominion or jurisdiction. Three things in a seal: the ruler's name, the ruler's position and title, the extent of his dominion or jurisdiction. That's in a seal. That's in a seal. That's in a seal. Now these points are critical because the Bible says. So remember, Revelation, Revelation fourteen twelve said, "Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that do what keep the commandments of God." Isaiah 8.16 Isaiah 8.16 Oh, help me, Jesus. Isaiah 8.16 Now watch this, Derek. <laughs> Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they to do what? Keep the commandments of God. Isaiah 8.16 Read it. Bind up the testimony and seal the Seal the law. Where? Among the disciples. Seal the what? So when the angel flies, he's sealing what? The law. Don't be afraid of it. He's sealing what? Not just a day. The law. Now in the law is the commandment that is the seal. Because the seal has the ruler's name, the ruler's position, instead of his dominion or jurisdiction, but, 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 but that fourth commandment is a part of a whole law. See, you, you, you can't make it on just remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You've got to make it on no gods before God. Huh? No images. Don't take his name in vain. Honor your folks. Don't kill. Don't lie. Don't commit adultery. Are you with me? You've got to make it on the whole thing. But the, the, the Sabbath, he's saying, you, you look for my seal in the law. And then I'm going to put that whole thing in your mind. And that's why Jesus said in John 14, 15, If you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. Proof of a relationship with God is obedience. Now, we don't like to hear that in sermons. Uh, the modern Christian church is always going around talking about love the Lord. Just love the Lord. Just love, love, love. Just love Him. And that thing always bothers me because I'm, I'm saying some of these folks have to be married. And we married folk know that love has got to be more than talk. Amen. Let the married folk say amen. amen. Let the folks who used to be married say amen. amen. And all this talk about love, love, love the Lord. Just, just love Him. Love Him how? There's no beans in the, in, in the cupboard. Love me how? There's no money in the bank. Love me how? 
I ain't got no clothes to wear on Sabbath. Love me how? You ain't given me a gift for Christmas in 15 years. Love me how? And God is declaring, I'm tired of talk. If you love me, keep my commandments. And to help you, I'm going to take that thing. If you open your mind to me, I'm going to seal that thing. And so in the fourth commandment, we have those characteristics of a seal. Mm -hmm. That phrase, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth. The seen all that in them is. The ruler's name is the Lord. Right. Ruler's position, he made, he created. Therefore he owns the extent of his dominion, heaven, earth, the seen all that in them is. Yeah. So the seal is in the law. Yes. Devil marking, God sealing. Yes. Devil marking, God sealing. Yes. Devil marking, God sealing. And the Lord takes that seventh day Sabbath and the fourth commandment. He links it to his people forever. Yes. Look at Exodus 31, 17. Exodus 31, 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. How long? Forever. For in six days the Lord made the heaven, the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. See, when I come here on Sabbath, Lupe, I bring something with me. I bring a relationship. I bring an attitude. And that's why when I come with that, you can't disturb me from Sabbath keeping. Because very frankly, I didn't come here to see you. This ain't your house. God's house. Came to be with Him. Meet Him. Fellowship with Him. And because of the relationship we've had all week. How long? I walk in. I just settle down. And I do just fine. Because I'm with my friend on Sabbath. Whom I've been with. Since Sunday. Ezekiel 20.20 20 says it's a sign. Mark 2.27 says the Sabbath was made for man. 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 Not Jew. Man. And not man for the Sabbath. The battle between Christ and Satan is intense. It's a call to loyalty. The Sabbath is the seventh day. It is the day on the calendar called Saturday. It has not been changed by God the Father, His Son, nor Jesus, nor was it changed by the apostles, called and trained by Jesus. The seventh-day Sabbath is God's sign of loyalty to who He is, and what only He can do to change the Sabbath from the seventh day is to change the Holy Ten Commandment law, which He's already sealing here. And so really there's only been one power that's ever made any claim about changing the Sabbath. Isn't that so? Put those statements up there on the screen. Oh, we got the right ones this time. Yeah. Read. Question. Everybody's reading. Question. Everybody's reading. Question. How prove you that the church hath power to command festivals and holy days? Answer. By the very act of changing the Sabbath into Sunday, which Protestants allow of. Next statement. Read. The church changed the observance of the Sabbath to Sunday by the right of divine infallible authority given to her by her founder, Jesus Christ. The Protestant, claiming the Bible to be the only guide to faith, has no warrant for observing Sunday. Next. Read. Is Saturday the seventh day according to the Bible and the Ten Commandments? I answer, yes. Read, did Christ, go back, go back, did Christ change the day? I answer, no, your, no, faithfully yours, J. Cardinal Gibbons. Next statement. Read, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. You see how clear the choice is? 
I said, do you see how clear the choice is? Worship the God who made heaven and earth or worship an image. Worship and accept my seal or accept a mark. But for those who think they have the seal, God says, don't just hand me a day, hand me a week. Don't just hand me a week, hand me a life. How does one honor such a day? How does one honor God in the fullness represented by the day? The Sabbath is a symbol of sealing of God. But it's got to be more than just that. Now we know some of the basic things, don't we, about keeping the Sabbath, don't we? Remember it, Exodus 28. Keep it holy, Exodus 28. Observe it from sundown to sundown. Sundown, Le- Leviticus 23:32. Leave off servile labor, Exodus 29. Prepare for it, Luke 23:54, Exodus 16. Don't engage in secular trans- transactions, Nehemiah 13:15 through 22. That's Sabbath keeping, isn't it? Actually, any devoted Pharisee can do that. Did you hear what I just said to you? And sometimes we Seventh-day Adventists get hung up on, are you keeping the Sabbath? Now, do your work, and, and did you watch any TV? And we got this litany list of Sabbath keeping. Well, folk, the Pharisees beat you to death. They not only didn't do any of that stuff, they would count their steps. They didn't smile on their Sabbath. They, they wouldn't get an ox out of the ditch. Well, they'd do that. They wouldn't help a man. You've got to get away from that list. I said, you've got to get away from that list. Now, is he saying those things? Are, I'm not saying those things are not important. I'm saying any child can keep that list. But the seal of God is placed here. So the Sabbath is more than a list, Frank Baker, of do's and don'ts. Something's got to happen inside of me for me to really keep the Sabbath. The commandments of God are a whole, not a part. Go to James 2.10. Go to James 2.10. James 2 and verse 10. Now, we all know this text already, but humor me. James 2.10. We love to preach on this text. Ready? Let's read. For whosoever, everybody, everybody, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point is how? Now, listen carefully. If that passage is true, that to keep all and then break one is to break all, then I submit that the reverse is true. If it is true, to break one is to break all, the reverse has to be true. To claim to keep any one while breaking any other is not to keep the one you you claim to keep. Let me say it again. If you claim you keep all and break one, you're guilty of how many? Then if you claim to keep one and are breaking any other, you're not keeping the one you claim to keep. See, that's the problem for the Sabbath keeper. I believe in the seventh day Sabbath. Okay. And I keep it faithfully. Okay. Come on, preacher. Sabbath keeping, therefore, is more than putting on your religious demeanor, mm-hmm. showing up in church on a given Sabbath, and saying you're keeping it. 
besides the attitude of worship that should accompany you to church, besides the thanksgiving and the worship that should permeate your worship, besides leaving off the secular activities, your regular job, besides doing good deeds and witnessing on the Sabbath, all true, all good. But Sabbath keeping is an attitude toward God that moves you to faithfulness in all the commandments. So the Sabbath keeper has no gods before God. The Sabbath keeper has no false images that replace and challenge God's place in your life. The Sabbath keeper doesn't wear his name that you are Christian and then consistently act unchristian. See, to be mean to your spouse on Friday and show up on the church on Saturday, I can guarantee you that your worship falls flat in the face of God. In fact, he says in Matthew, go back and find that spouse. Doesn't he say it? Drop your offering. Keep it in your pocket. Straighten things out. Then, doesn't he say that? That shows you how God feels about real worship. Come here on Sabbath talking about this folk in the church you can't get along with. Watch the next sentence. Stay home. Stay home. I'm serious. Stay home. Don't pollute the pews with your presence. Your attitude does not let you worship. You're walking here wanting God to perform some magic for you on Sabbath. The Holy Spirit is not near you. Because you said no to him when you walked in the door and walked by that person you will not speak to. Your worship is a waste of time. If God's Spirit walking with you, you're going to walk up to that person you've not been speaking to and speak to them whether they speak to you or not. Then they can't worship, but you can. Come on, somebody. You can't keep the Sabbath disrespecting the parents and elderly who brought you into this world no matter what their spiritual condition is. Some of you are hindered in true Sabbath keeping because you got folks in your family you're not getting along with. You got parents you're not respecting. God's not interested that they were a drunkard. He doesn't care if they were a prostitute. He doesn't care if they molested you or beat you. The commandment says, Honor thy father and thy mother. You see, true commandment keeping lifts you above the mess. Come on, somebody. A commandment keeper is victorious. We walk by what happened. We don't keep living back there. I'm free in Jesus. So I don't care how they treated me. I'm unshackled. I can speak to the molester. I can pray for the drunkard. I can love the abuser. Come on, somebody. And then I can sit in church, Renee, and worship the Lord. Because my heart is not all messed up with stuff and feelings and resentments. I'm trying to set you free this morning. I want to worship in church with real Sabbath keepers. Not day keepers. Sabbath keepers. Yes, sir. People who are so full of the Holy Spirit, they've moved beyond measuring a day. All this stuff from sundown to sundown we go through and and, and put on a whole new act when the sun sets on Friday. Spit on that. Let's get on down to the business of being Christians every day. Walking in here with our false wings on our back on Sabbath morning and flying around the church for a whole 24-hour period and act like we've never done a sin. And then when the sun sets, we can't wait to get to the club. Stay on home. Spend all Sabbath in the club. You might as well be there. Go ahead. It's all right, preacher. Yes, sir. Make it plain, preacher. The Sabbath keeper does not kill with word. Or act toward their fellow man. Sabbath keeper ain't got no time for gossip. Because he knows he's got so many sins himself. Has no time to talk about anybody else. 
comes in church on Sabbath, humble like the Pharisee, beating on his breast and saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. So when I hear about sister so-and-so and brother so-and-so doing so-and-so, I have no time to discuss it. I'm just trying to get my own so-and-so together with Jesus Christ. The true Sabbath keeper is not going to devalue another person by thought or deed. That is, we don't steal. See, committing adultery focuses more than a wrong sex act. It's just devaluing somebody else. You can commit adultery without touching somebody. Your mind just ain't right. See, think about this thing, Palmer. See, 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 see what the pastor is after today. I'm trying to take us to a new level of worship. I want us to be able to say, free at last, yes, sir. free at last. Thank God Almighty, yes. free at last. Yes. Come in here unshackled. Mm. The true Sabbath keeper does not steal from God's investment mm-hmm. in you by depreciating your health, sitting in church on Sabbath morning, robbing Him in His face of tithe and offering. Come on now. I, was, I was looking at this thing, Lisa Reeves, and, 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 and the book Stewardship, the old writer says there, says that, 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 that some tithe and offering, the record never gets past the ceiling of the church. It's never recorded in heaven because it's given by hands and hearts that know nothing about the love of Jesus Christ Mercy. remember the Pharisees you think you faithful in tithe and offering they paid tithe on their cologne and their herbs you ain't never done that in your natural born life see that's why I like pure religion see pure religion gets beyond stuff and acts Anybody can write out 10%. But when you give 100% of your life to Jesus, yeah, the true Sabbath keeper has no, 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 no lying to his neighbor during the week and then expect God to accept me as truth filled on Sabbath. What do you think about that? You're going to lie to your wife, to your husband that week. And you're going to come to church on Saturday morning for the truth. (laughs) Is the pastor making any sense today at all? Do do, do you all feel my burden today? Do you understand that I love you today? But I'm concerned. You see, there's a ceiling going on. And I want to make sure my mind belongs to Jesus Christ. But I realize now he's passing over people who just keep a day and looking for people whose attitude no the Sabbath keeper doesn't come in here with dissatisfaction on Sabbath with what God has provided see no coveting see many of us we think I don't covet my neighbor's wife I don't covet my neighbor's car I don't covet my neighbor's servants but you covet God's blessings to other people and don't appreciate your own In short, I didn't say it now enough. Come on, Sister Wendy. In short, Sabbath keeping is more than a day. It's a life that embraces all that God wants me to be. And I picture him every day, Elaine Arthur. I can see him. Great. I think he's one of them big angels, Will. And he got this seal. Huh? And he's looking. Uh, people, Keith settled. And you can't fool him. Uh, this is an angel with x ray vision. <laughs> you can't fool him. Mm-hmm. He passes back and forth, back and forth, looking for folks who've decided that Jesus is everything. 
people crying out, Lord, change me now. Change me now. And this is why I believe in the last days is going to be this great influx of people who've not been keeping the day, but know the Lord. Coming in and accepting the day. And a great falling away of people who've been keeping the day but never knew the Lord of the day. Come on, somebody. It's going to be a great exchange, and I don't want to be caught up in the going out group. I want to be here till Jesus comes. I want the Lord to change me now and then seal it so nobody can take it like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. I shall not be moved. That's what the third angels, those three angels, have been trying to say. And I pray God we have heard them.
Lord, I need you so much to change me now. The first angel says, fear him, glorify him, worship him. The second angel says it's time for confusion to fall, Babylon. Confusion about what? For the second and the first angel are clarified by the third. Stop worshiping anything in any way that's not true to God. Because when you do, you receive a mark. But when you worship the Lord who made heaven and earth, then here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. The Lord, listen, the Lord would like to change you from a false worshiper to a true worshiper. Did you get the sermon today? You see, Conrad, as we go into 2009, I'd like our worship at CPC to go to another level. It's not going to happen because we decorate the stage right, because the sound system works perfectly because the streaming signals are clear, because we have a talented young man at the instruments and on this side, that isn't what's going to improve our worship. What's going to improve our worship in this church is that we start coming in here after a week of service to God, of relationship, Sister Russell, so deep that all the other false stuff, Andre, just falls by the way, man. And there is a resonance between the members of CPC that's feelable by those that come in here. Souls are changed. The Holy Ghost finds us irresistible. He runs up and down the aisles because he's home here. me from worshiping you fearing you glorifying you what am I doing that has my life confused and that makes me more of a potential to be marked than sealed I want you to change me now you need that change in your life, would you raise your hand? Mine went up first. Mine went up first. If you need that change in your life downstairs in the other overflow rooms, will you raise your hand? Keep it up, folk. Keep it up. We're saying to you, Jesus, we want to be changed. We want to worship the Lord. We want to fear you, glorify you. We want confuse. Your hand's still up. It may be tired. Your hand is up. Rest it. Put it back up. We want you, Lord, to remove confusion from us. I do not want to be marked. I want to be sealed. And I know now that the seal though represented by the Sabbath is more than a day it's an attitude toward God now you can put your hand down and you're sitting here today and there's a decision for Jesus that you need to make something you needed to do for the whole year maybe you need to make that fresh start in rebaptism. maybe you've never been baptized into this message before Maybe you need to start those Bible studies you've been taking off. You've been putting off. 
whatever your case, the need for baptism, the need for rebaptism, the need for Bible studies to prepare for baptism, the need to transfer your membership and become a part of a fellowship and not some drifting spiritual Bedouin going from one place to another. Whatever you need, you can rise now and come. I'd be glad to take your hand. Who'll come? Who'll come? Downstairs, you can come. Balcony, you can come. Change me now. Jesus says, please, please. about the message or would like to contact us with any prayer requests, please use the prayer request tool at the top of the page. We invite you to share this message with someone else and check back next week for another message. Thank you for visiting with us at www.cpcsda.org. We pray that you experience the presence of God always with you.